Hey everybody, welcome back to the Caliber 8 Tools channel and today we're gonna explore the topic of ergonomics. Now what exactly is ergonomics, especially when it comes to tools? Stick around and we'll talk about it right after this. <music> Okay guys, before we jump into the video, remember the overarching rule of ergonomics is to twist or bend the tool, not the wrist. So what is ergonomics when it comes to tool design? Well, to put it simply, it has to do with safety, comfort, ease of use, and to some degree, aesthetics, meaning how it looks. Okay, when it comes to ergonomics of hand tools or power tools, there are a few guidelines that you have to consider. The first one is weight. How much does the tool weigh? It's recommended that the tool weigh no more than three to five pounds. So I got a couple of tools here. I got a cordless drill, okay? And then I have a corded drill. Let's see how much they weigh. I got my uh, scale right here. Let's turn it on. And it's on grams. Let's switch it to pounds. There you go. So let's see how much our corded drill weighs. Right? It definitely falls under the guidelines of three to five pounds. This one's about 2.1 pounds. And let's try our cordless drill. Okay, so the cordless drill is about 3.9 pounds, so it falls within the standard weight requirements as well. I got an angle grinder. Let's see how much this weighs. Hmm. 4.3 pounds. Here's an orbital sander. Let's see how much this weighs. Yeah, about 3.5. So another ergonomic requirement for a hand tool or power tool is that you should be able to hold the tool with one hand. Now the weight of the tool will determine how long you can hold the tool up. If it's too heavy, you can't hold it up that long and that'll affect the performance of the tool and the time it takes to complete a task. The weight also affects how you hold the tool. Once again, if it's too heavy, you may try to manipulate the tool or hold the tool in an unsafe or awkward manner, which also affects how the tool performs. In other words, the distribution of weight in the tool can cause you to have a good grip or a bad grip. Now for smaller tools like this needle nose plier here that you would use for more intricate, precise handling, uh, these tools are called precision tools and these should weigh no more than one pound, okay? So let's see how much this one weighs. 0.4 pounds, about four ounces to be exact. So why is that important? Well, with intricate, more precise jobs, let's just say you're manipulating the wiring in a panel box or you're stripping wire, you don't need a heavy tool. A heavier tool will make that kind of job a nightmare. That's why precision tools are light and small. And in the case of a needle nose plier, the ergonomics of the plier or the shape of the plier is very sharp and precise to perform those very intricate and precise tasks. Now, if the weight of the tool cannot be compromised, in other words, it has to be a certain weight, even if it's a little heavy on the back end or say even the front end, then ergonomics demands that there be a counterweight on the back end or front end or somewhere on the tool to offset the front heavy portion or back heavy portion. So take for instance this brad nailer here. Let's weigh this. Okay, so we can see that the brad nailer exceeds the standard requirement of five pounds max, right? It's about 6.2 pounds, right? But even though the brad nailer is about six pounds, the weight and how it's distributed in the tool makes it comfortable to hold and easy to use. So obviously there's a counterbalance somewhere in the ergonomics of this tool. It's probably on the back end here, and it could be distributed in several places on the tool to make it comfortable to use and to keep the performance optimal. Now notice this angle grinder here. Now it's pretty front heavy, okay? Most of the weight is on the front end of this tool, right? You can feel it. Well, there's actually a reason why angle grinders are front heavy because it helps to reduce the force that's needed when using it. But they give you an extra handle here that you can attach if need be to either end of the angle grinder Say if you're left-handed or right-handed, let's screw it in. And this handle here makes it much easier to handle the tool. That's all part of anticipating the ergonomic needs of the user. 
And they have devices out there like tool balancers, straps, articulating arms to help in balancing weight as well. At the end of the day, the center of gravity of the tool should be in alignment with the center of gravity of the gripping hand. This makes it easier to hold and comfortable to use. Okay guys, we just talked about weight and weight distribution in tool design ergonomics. But the next thing we wanna cover is handle design and handle ergonomics. Now handles should be designed for what's called a power grip, meaning that all of the fingers should be used in holding the tool. All of the fingers of the hand should be working together to maximize the grip on the tool, as you see right here, okay? The whole hand is being used. This rule doesn't apply to precision tools like this needle nose plier where you may only need two or three fingers to hold the tool. As a matter of fact, if you use more than that, well, in this case, the handle is long. If you use more than that on some precision tools, it's actually impractical to do so. Take this screwdriver, for instance. You only need about two or three fingers to manipulate it. You don't necessarily need your whole hand. As a matter of fact, it makes it even more uncomfortable to do that. Now the shape of the handle is determined by the application or task that must be performed. So if a force is being directed in a straight line, let's just say we're gonna drill into this piece of wood here, in a straight line in the same direction as your extended forearm or wrist, then a pistol grip or bent handle is the best handle to use. So if the force that needs to be exerted on an object like this nail is perpendicular or at a 90 degree angle to your wrist or forearm, then a straight handle is the best thing to use. This nail that has to be driven into this wood is gonna be at a 90 degree angle to my wrist and forearm. And the best handle to use, once again, is a straight handle. It's the same with wrenches, whether it's a crescent wrench or a ratcheting wrench. Let's pretend my finger is a screw or nut. The force being applied by the wrench is gonna be perpendicular to your wrist or forearm, see? So in these cases, straight handles are better. The rule is to use tools that keep the wrist straight in the same plane as your forearm. For example, when I hold this drill, my wrist is straight. It's not twisting or turning. You don't want what's called wrist flexion, where your wrist has to twist to turn a lot, right? You wanna use tools that keep your wrist pretty much straight. Now with a hammer, your wrist doesn't have to twist a lot either. It's pretty much in the same plane as your forearm when you're using it. It may bend a little bit, but not a lot. Too much of this can cause injury, so it's a safety issue when it comes to ergonomics. Okay, some more ergonomic requirements include the diameter of the handle. So handles should be cylindrical, you know, around 1.5 inches in diameter, and about 0.45 inches in diameter for precision tools. Now this is a screwdriver, obviously it's a cylindrical handle, it makes it easier to hold. Uh, if we take the drill for a second here. Now the handle is not cylindrical completely, it's more elliptical, but it does make it easier to hold. Matter of fact, the elliptical shape of the handle is probably more comfortable that way. They know what they're doing when they make these. Same with the hammer, it's not exactly a perfectly round handle, but it doesn't have to be. Matter of fact, these are designed to be more elliptical than you know a perfect circle, because that way it's more comfortable to hold with larger or longer tools. A screwdriver is not that long, and a perfectly round handle will probably be the best for this. And that's the nuances of ergonomics that you tend to find out when you study the subject. It's very interesting. Okay, so after diameter comes the length of the handle. Now it's said that the length of the handle should be no shorter than four inches, maybe five and a half inches in some cases. So let's take our measuring tape and look at the screwdriver handle. That's about four inches right there. So obviously a handle that's too short won't work because it'll put undue pressure right here in the pit of your palm and that won't be good. So the handle should span at least the whole length of your palm. So even if I put the handle against my palm, it pretty much spans the whole length of your palm. Of course, that depends on how big your hand is, but generally speaking, it should span the width or the length of your palm. Now, if you're working with gloves, a longer handle length may be necessary. Okay, so the next consideration is span or the separation between handles. And that's usually referring to tools with two handles like pliers or tongs or any kind of cutting or gripping tool with two handles. Now the distance between the handles is recommended to be about two and a half to three and a half inches. Now, of course they have tools with larger spans than that, but understand that the grip strength will be largely reduced because of the larger span. 
Then after that, we have to consider the material or texture of the handles. Now the handle material should be made of a non-conductive material, meaning that it can conduct electricity. It should be made of a non-slip material and it should be able to be compressible, meaning that you should be able to at least squeeze into it and you know have a good grip. Most tool handles are made of rubber or plastic, so that takes care of the non-conductive material part and the non-slip part. But this handle right here on the needle nose plier can get a little bit slippery, so you wanna make sure that you're careful with that. Now, if you have a tool with a trigger like this drill right here, you wanna make sure that there's a trigger lock or some kind of locking mechanism for the trigger. And that's this right here. So when you engage the trigger, it's locked. And that's for safety reasons, obviously. And you don't want to apply too much force to the trigger because over time that can put stress on the tissues and tendons in your hands and that's cause for injury. And ergonomics is all about reducing uh, or minimizing the risk of injury. Now the last thing we want to cover is the vibration issue. Now it's said that the vibration issue is something that you can't control because it happened at the design stage or the manufacturing stage. So the only thing you can do when you're using a vibrating tool is to try to insulate yourself from the vibration. So they have anti-vibration gloves. They have these things called tool covers. And you know, of course, maintenance may have something to do with it too. So if you maintain your tool on a regular basis, that may reduce some of the vibration coming from it. And you may want to ask around and do some research on some prospective tools that you may want to purchase for your tool arsenal to see if it has a reputation for vibrating. Okay, if you're going to be using a tool repetitively over a long period of time, use a power tool over a manual hand tool. This will greatly reduce the risk of injury or any kind of tendonitis, carpal tunnel syndrome, or any kind of condition that comes about through the repetitive use of manual hand tools. Okay guys, I always thought of tools as extensions of the mind and the human body to the physical world. And ergonomics is the bridge. If you learned just a little bit today about ergonomics, hit that like and subscribe button and I'll see you guys in the next one.